if you've been watching any of the videos on the many channels that are that are uh, doing videos on the Nano VNA, including mine, and you feel a little uncomfortable about Smith charts, this video is going to be an attempt to demystify the Smith chart. Now, I wish I could say simplify. The Smith chart is a fairly sophisticated tool. And so if you want to understand everything about the Smith chart, there's no way to simplify that. But if you just want a general idea of what are all these, these curves and arcs and uh, J this and uh, so on, maybe this video is for you. If you've looked at Smith charts online and you have looked at what some people call the complete Smith chart, you, you may be a little overwhelmed by the amount of detail. Uh, I actually think that the, <laughs> it's rather ironic that the, uh, this particular Smith chart is uh, published online by Blackmagic Design. And the truth is that uh, some of this, at least used to be, before computers uh, came along and simplified it, used to really be a lot of black magic. <laughs> uh, there were one or two wizards in every organization that dealt with RF who understood this stuff, and most of the rest of us didn't. Uh, and I include myself in that because I spent some time doing uh, engineering design, and even during the time when I was using Smith charts, I never felt like I was the master, the wizard. So maybe I can bring a little bit of order out of this by simplifying the Smith chart itself down to its essential elements and then explaining how those elements work to, or how you can read the Smith chart to find out what these uh, uh, circles and uh, to use an old uh, uh, song from my youth, uh, the circles and arrows and a diagram on the uh, description on the back of each one. If you remember Alice's Restaurant, that's from that song. Uh, and the idea is that you don't need to understand everything about a Smith chart, including all of these rather esoteric additions at the bottom and this rather complicated chart itself to feel comfortable using a Smith chart in uh, analyzing a, uh, a circuit. The first thing I'm going to do is to draw the, the bare elements of a Smith chart. They consist of one horizontal line representing resistance and arcs that represent uh, impedance and circles that represent resistance. Let me say that again. The, uh, the line across the center represents a pure resistance and a circle represents the resistive component of an impedance and the arc represents the reactive component. Now, don't worry, we'll get into this if you haven't seen any of this before. But to do that, we have to recognize Eli the Iceman. So who's this Eli guy? And what is his relationship to Smith, whoever that is? Well, first let's take care of who Smith is. If you go back to the January 1939 edition of Electronics Magazine, you will find an article called Transmission Line Calculator by F. H. Smith. And that is the first publication of a Smith chart. I won't be going into the details of that paper. Instead, now let's introduce Eli. Well, Eli, the Iceman, is a uh, mnemonic 
that a lot of students of electronics have learned over the years. E stands for electromotive force or voltage. L stands for inductance. And I stands for the current. So the voltage across the inductor is called E. The current through the inductor is called I. And the inductor is called L. Therefore, E L I is Eli. And the reason that it's written in that form rather than I L E is the voltage leads the current. If you look at the waveforms of the voltage and the current for an inductor, what you will find is that they are separated by one quarter wavelength. That is, no matter what frequency you apply to the inductor, the voltage across the inductor and the current through it will be 90 degrees out of phase. Now, of course, an entire cycle is 360, a half cycle is 180, and a quarter cycle is 90. So the voltage leads the, the uh, current in an inductor, E, L, and then I, Eli. So, what about the Iceman? Well, if you have a capacitor, once again, voltage across it is E, C is the capacitor, and I is the current. In that case, the current, I, leads the voltage E. Therefore, I, C, E, ice. So, Eli the Iceman is just a convenient way of remembering how these uh, phase relationships work out for inductors and capacitors. Now, of course, with a resistor, the current and voltage are in phase, so you don't need a mnemonic for that. They are, the, the voltage follows the current and the current follows the voltage, they, or they track together, I guess I should say. There's no phase difference. If you draw a vector diagram, and by the way, this uh, these pictures are from a writer book called Understanding Vectors and Phase that you can download from the worldradiohistory.com website. And it's one of the books that I frankly studied when I was back in high school. It's a very good book. It starts with basics. You don't need to know very much. <laughs> Boy, I didn't know very much then. Uh, so if you'd like more on these sorts of things, Download that book and, and take a look at it. But if you draw the, the in-phase component, in this case the voltage, and the out-of-phase component, that is the current, the, the angle between these two is the 90 degrees. So all you're really doing with these lines is the length of the line represents the magnitude so this is the magnitude of the current, and this is the magnitude of the voltage, and the 90 degrees represents the phase relationship between the two. Now, if you draw a uh, diagram for an inductor, the, uh, the axis that is perpendicular is generally called plus J, and we'll talk about that in a second. And this is the resistance axis. So, if you think about this, this is the resistor, resistive component, and this is the inductive component of any uh, complex impedance. Let's, t let's take a look at that in just a little more depth. On a vector network analyzer, you may notice that you can set up a channel to do the log magnitude, and you can set up a channel to do phase, and you can also set up a, a channel to do Smith chart. But you're actually, the Smith chart duplicates the information that you get from log mag and phase. Let's assume that you're doing the S11. And what is S11? That's where the vector network analyzer is sending a signal in to the device under test, and for that, with a nano VNA, you use channel zero. 
and then is reading what is reflected and comparing it to what is sent out. So it sends out a certain level signal, looks at the reflection, and computes from that what is called S11. It can also sometimes be called the standing wave ratio or the reflection coefficient. Uh, but basically what you're trying to discover is how much power that goes out of the VNA gets absorbed in the device under test and how much of it gets reflected back to the VNA. If there is a perfect match, then all of the power will be absorbed and there will be no reflection. And if there's no reflection, that means you have a one-to-one -one standing wave ratio for those of you that are amateur radio operators. So now back to magnitude and phase. Well, if you have a start frequency and a stop frequency and a a magnitude chart that looks like this, and a phase chart maybe that looks like this. If you set a marker at a particular frequency, it will give you a magnitude value and a phase value. Let's suppose you are reading S11 and you get a magnitude and a phase. All the Smith chart is doing is displaying this same information for each and every frequency point, just like this log mag and phase diagram. So in other words, it is it, this duplicates what's being displayed up there. Let's see how that, how that might work. The magnitude of the signal is normally represented on a chart like this, where the angle between the resistance or x-axis and the, the particular uh, signal that you are measuring at that frequency is the phase angle. And that's normally measured in degrees. And the magnitude is the absolute magnitude of, for example, S11. That magnitude and phase can be represented by a reactance and a resistance. And that is normally written R for the resistance plus and then either a plus or minus J and then the reactance. If it's an inductor, the uh, it will be plus J. And as we saw a minute ago, if it's a capacitor, it'll be minus J. It'll be down here. So minus J is capacitive, plus J is inductive. And that's exactly what we are plotting on the Smith chart. Along this axis are the pure resistances. A circle which just touches the, this right edge of the Smith chart represents the resistive component of a, a complex impedance. The arc that starts at the right-hand right edge and arcs upward represents a plus J impedance. So, if you have R plus JX, the R is the point where this circle crosses the R axis, and the J is where that circle crosses the, or I should say the impedance is, where that circle crosses the reactance curve. This is X. This is R. And where R and X cross on a Smith chart is the R plus JX value for that frequency. Now it's important to understand that's just for one frequency. So in a Smith chart, what you might wind up with is something like the what we saw at the very beginning of this video where there might be a whole group of uh, values that are displayed. So, for example, suppose that you have something that starts out at about 50 ohms at some frequency. And as the frequency goes up, it does this. 
all you're doing is you are showing the magnitudes and phase angles of each of the points along this uh, this magnitude and phase uh, readout, but you're showing it on a polar chart. In other words, every single point on this line has a resistance, in this case that's 25 ohms, and a uh, a J value or an impedance uh, that is in this case very close to J25. That's plus J25. So if it's 25 ohms resistance and 25 ohms of reactance it would be this spot. Now they're not always equal of course. For example at this point our J value is 10 our R value is a little under uh, 10, or I'm sorry, a little over 10, so it's maybe about 12. So this point might be R plus, oh, I'm sorry, 12 plus J10. 12 because it's on the 12 circle for resistance and it's on the J10 arc. So if when you're working with a Smith chart you just remember that it is a plot of magnitude and phase for a signal. If you're using channel 0 of say the nano VNA, you're measuring S11, all you are plotting on this chart are the different values of magnitude and phase for S11 that vary with the frequency. So I hope that is helps put some things in context. Before I close, I hope I won't confuse the issue much more, but I will point out something that the Smith chart we've been using is the Smith chart for impedance. You can draw a Smith chart for admittance. Now, most of us learn Ohm's law as E equals IR. If we learned it as I equals uh, EY, then we would draw our Smith charts this way. They are exactly the same thing. Notice though that the admittance uh, chart the short is on the right, whereas on the impedance chart it's on the left. Similarly, the open is on the right of the impedance chart and it's on the left of the admittance chart. Now, I hope this doesn't confuse you by adding in these additional things. All I'm saying is it's just two different ways of looking at this. If you're dealing with series elements, like two resistors in series, impedance is the easiest thing to use. But if you're dealing with elements in parallel, I think you will find that if you learn to use admittance, which uh, is, is basically the, the reciprocal of uh, the impedance, you'll find that you can work with the elements in parallel because just like resistors in series or, or impedances in series that add up, admittances in parallel add up. So it, the math is much simpler if you just use admittance where you have elements in parallel instead of resistance. So that's a little bonus. <laughs> I hope it hasn't added confusion to what otherwise <laughs> hopefully is a simplification or at least a demystification of the Smith chart. I hope this has been useful and you've enjoyed it. Uh, We'll be doing some more with Smith charts and with uh, VNAs in the future. But for the meantime, be safe and have a nice day.